gonna be fun tonight. All right, we are live and direct here on that the Roundtable Podcast Show. We are streaming on Facebook and YouTube. Believe it or not, well, we get big. We're on YouTube. Check out our YouTube channel. Oh man, family, what's going on? Yes, I love yes, it. Yes. I'm loving it too. Hey, but before we get started, I always have to hand it off. You know, this is like a relay. So I'm about to go ahead and hit that baton. Bam, right there to the pit bull in the dress. Ms. Melissa Bartlett, what's going on, sis? What's going on, family? How are you guys? I am super, super excited about our show tonight and just kind of reading up on our guests prior to her coming on. And then, you know, we get the privilege of having pre podcast convo. Um, and now I'm just like, I feel like a little kid on Christmas, you guys. You are in for a treat. Um, I am glad it's hump day because that means I have two more days. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm excited about that. And um, got to go ahead and pass that baton to my bro, Adrian A. Money Biddle. Hey, family. I'm hey, so buddy, looking this way. Yes, indeed. Yeah. But why are we calling A. Money? Hold on. Oh, right. I call him A Money because A Money is our fact checker. He brings details and he brings the questions. And when he brings anything to you, you can bank on it. Bank on it. Hey, yes, I, indeed. I appreciate that, family. Uh, when I get my tax returns, I got a check waiting for you. When I get my taxes back, yeah. you'll never you know, know when those taxes go. Ah, <laughs> uh, and last but not least, the man in my upper left hand corner, the conductor himself, the man that stirs the drink, Mr. Urban himself, CD. CD. Hey, family, what is going on? It is truly an honor and a blessing to be here. I'm trying to handle multiple things because we look like we got people that are coming in. The numbers going up, and I'm looking over to the side. Hopefully, nobody will pop in here real quick into the studio. <laughs> but hey. Never know. Never know. I mean, it's the people's podcast. (laughs) Anything can happen on this one. But I am I'm thoroughly thrilled to have this guest on. And the reason why is because I've known her for for quite some time. And it's been amazing the things that she's done. And she's taught me a lot. Mm. And she's always been in the corner. And the things that she's doing right now, I think really speaks volumes in our community. So when I reached out to her, I was like, yo, uh, you know, we thinking about the show and what, it, and she was like, sure. Mm-hmm. And it's never been a time mm-hmm. when she says no, because that's not her spirit. Mm-hmm. So I want to introduce to everybody, the multitudes that watch at the round table podcast show, grandma and them, Papa and them, Angie Bell. Hi. Hey. Hey. Welcome Angie. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. And y'all, um, I want to stress greatly, ask any question that you mm-hmm. wish to in regards to her project, her program, and, and anything else that is going on. Because I'm going to tell you, she is a wealth of knowledge. And I think mm-hmm. there's going to be some sisters that are really going to be blessed. And there's going to mm-hmm. be some other people's eyes are going to be open tonight. They are. Mm-hmm. All right. So who wants to start this thing up? Well, you know what? I don't even want to say that. Mm-hmm. We know we're going to start it off. Melissa. <laughs> um, so for guys that have seen the trailer and saw the, the flyers, um, Miss Bell, I'm going to go right into your Lamp Loves project mm-hmm. um, this year of 2021 at the Roundtable podcast mm-hmm. is is vowed to, to make sure that we shine a light on good vibes, people that mm-hmm. have positive energy and people who are giving back to their communities. So you fell right in line with our mission of service for this year. So let our family know, what is it about Lamp Loves Project? What is it? How does it function? And how was it born? So well, first of all, thank you all for having me. It, is, it really is a pleasure and an honor to be here. Um, Many people know of, have heard of the work that we do or that I've done, but I'm not very often um, seen. And so this is an honor, a pleasure. I am nervous, but I feel at home now, like you all said I would. And I thank you for that. Lamb's Love Project started um, in December, 2013. I lost my cousin Yolanda. Um, She passed away. And in February of 2014, my best girlfriend's mom 
passed away and um, she's the only child. So we grew up like sisters. And by that point, I had already started the grieving process uh, and had started grief counseling because that was really heavy on me. And my cousin Yolanda meant so much to me. And she was such a great supporter of um, another business that I had. And so by the time I started grief counseling um, in February 2014, February of 20, March of 2015, my cousin uh, Mary Jenkins passed away and we were all close. Her children and I, we were all very close. And then in Mar April of 2015, 14, my uncle Lubin passed away. And I found that I found out that news as I was leaving grief counseling. And I decided that when my cousin Yolanda passed away, I had already started thinking of what I can do to help with my grieving. And I decided to do something, turn my grief into good grief. And so I started doing um, blessing bags for the homeless. And I wanted to do something that would be a blessing to someone else ultimately to realize that it was a blessing to me and it made me feel good. Everyone handles grief differently. And for me, uh, I knew I didn't want to do anything wild. I didn't want to do anything that would be detrimental to myself or others. So I decided to turn my grief into good grief. And that's how Lamps Love Project was born. And then one night, um, I remember vaguely, I couldn't sleep. And I woke up about three or four o'clock in the morning and I picked my phone up and I logged into my Facebook account. And I was going through some pictures on my cousin Yolanda's Facebook page. And I saw that she had been doing um, these bags, these blessing bags. I know had no um, past history or no knowledge about that in the past. And when I saw that she was doing that, it was so a, a blessing to me. And that kind of brought it home for me to say, hey, I'm going to do something really positive. So with that, I saw that Lamps Love Project, what we do is we provide daily essentials for our friends without homes, um, what we call our homies. Uh, we call we provide daily essentials for our homies. And we also fulfill the wish list, which many people don't know about this. We fulfill the wish list for the battered women's shelter in Rock Hill, South Carolina and Wilmington, North Carolina. And what makes our program very different and very unique is that we actually put the blessing bags in the hands of the homeless. Not everyone makes it to the shelter. Not everyone opts to go to the shelter. We literally interact with them on their level. And that's what makes us different. Wow. Right. Wow. Mm -hmm. That is incredible. Well, Angie, what, what are some of the um, supplies that you, you, um, you hand out to the homeless? So some of the things we have, this is an example of our blessing bag. And our blessing bags, uh, on average, have about fifteen dollars worth of worth of items in there, and we're very strategic strategic about what we put in our bags. And everyone who volunteers with me knows, or even our donors, they know they know. I only give what I would use. If I wouldn't use it, I'm not going to give it to our homies. And so, therefore, I'm really particular about that. At the same time, we can only give what we have. And so one of the, some of the things that we have in our blessing bags are the Kleenex, um, the Kleenex that we give to our homies. We give our we give them um, alcohol pads mm. and this can be used for scrapes, bruises, but also some of our homies are diabetic and they have to use insulin. Mm. And these are really, really good to help with any medical condition that requires them using a needle and it also can help with any street addiction that they may have although we don't encourage it and we pray that they'll you know kick that habit life hands you situations that you have to deal with daily and so better safe than sorry um one of the other things that we give them is a full bar of soap our our soap of preference is usually dial antibacterial soap but we give them a, a full bar of soap now i will tell you firsthand um, whew, 150 bars of dial soap at one time is very overwhelming when it's in the back of your car. So we do full size bottle, full size bar of dial, and we also give um, a full size toothbrush. Um, let me put light on for me. A full size toothbrush, and to our to our homies when we can afford it. This is one of my favorites, Motrin. Now, 
I don't know the age of our homies, but what I do know is I am over the age of 40 and I keep these. So if I need them, I'm sure my homies need them too. Um, we also have deodorant. Our de deodorant of choice. Um, we, we order these in bulk when we can, but sometimes we use the Armor Hammer. We don't have the luxury of going, getting, you know, to say, hey, you're going to get flowers, this one may, some men have to make, may have to use floral scented soap, some men may not. We try to keep it gender neutral when we probably, when we can, but we give them the best we can. We don't want to give the, the small ones because they need to use deodorant every day. Mm -hmm. you, you never know the feeling of smelling good. Although I am on video right now, I found it important to put on perfume. Although, you know, I'm no one, no one's here to smell that. It made me feel good. So that's how I wanted my, our homies to feel. In the summer, in the winter time, we give them hot hands. And these are so essential to our homies. Not only can you put these on your, in your, on your hands, but you can put these on your body. And mainly we encourage you to put them in your hat. You lose most of your body heat through the top of your head. If you put them on your in your hat, that helps you keep your body temperature warm. Put them on in, on your feet, in your shoes, under your armpits, wherever you find that you're cold, hot hands. And we try to give them as many of these as possible, but that's not always the case based on what we can afford. Here's one of my favorites, which we have a hard time getting, um, which is chapstick. And this is the EOS chapstick. Now, I will say sometimes I do like to spoil my homies and give them the really good stuff. And mm -hmm. most of you know this one, it's like an egg shape, but this is the EOS chapstick. And um, we have some volunteers who are able to spoil us with products like this. And we really love giving that to them. We also have, um, when we had a shortage at the beginning of the pandemic, we were all scrambling around for hand sanitizer and mm -hmm. Lysol, Kleenex, face masks. We were fortunate enough to be able to give all of our homies a bottle of anti, um, I mean, of um, hand sanitizer. Yes. So that's what we get. We've been giving this out for eight years now. So oh, wow. this is essential. If you can't do anything else, you can use this to wash your hands mm -hmm. because it does have some alcohol in it. You can use this to for scrapes and bruises. Mm -hmm. um, you can always use this to wipe off if you need to. Uh, so that's essential too. Our biggies are white washcloths mm. we give okay. make sure all of our homies have a white washcloth and this serves as for multiple purposes this can be a compress if you're having a migraine if you have a headache if you have a wound you can do this as a compress you can put a plastic bag of ice in here for a cold compress you can always use this if some of our homies do have the opportunity to get their laundry done and just like when you go to a hotel you notice that all of your hand towels your sheets things are white. And that's because the laundry service can use bleach. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the same thing. We, that's the same reason why we give our homies white washcloths mm -hmm. so that they too can use bleach to clean their um, their belongings well. But our most essential item, and we give them uh, five safety pins, three cough, cough drops. We give them a full-size toothpaste when we can. We also give them lotion and there's a lotion that I'm really particular about. Um, it's not in one of these bags because we run out of it quickly, but mm -hmm. utterly smooth is at the, um, is it at the Dollar Tree. But when I worked for Bayer Pharmaceuticals um, for our oral cancer medication, we gave it to our patients because it was really good for their skin. Now we don't know what our patients are being diagnosed with or what they're working with, but I do know if it's good enough for our chemo patients, it's good enough for our homies. And that is the lotion that I like to use. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if we can afford it, we'll get them small square bottles of jars of Vaseline. Vaseline goes a long way. It cuts through the winter cold. It helps with, you can serve as chapstick. Vaseline is really good as well. Mm -hmm. But the most essential thing in our bag are socks. Mm -hmm. Thermal socks. And as I was explaining to some people before, if you ride around your city and you look around downtown, uptown, however they reference it, you'll see on the city benches, there's a little hump on the bench. Mm -hmm. And you will think that that's an armrest. 
And it, it indeed is not. What it is, is to keep our homies from laying down. Wow. As long as you're sitting up, you're fine. And you'll see a lot of our homies are asleep sitting up. When you lay down, that's considered as loitering. Mm. And then you have to move. But as long as you're sitting up. So if you're moving from spot to spot to spot to spot, your feet take a takes a huge wear on it. So that's why we give them socks. However, socks can also serve as a washcloth. Mm. It can serve as gloves. It can serve as uh, when you're out on the streets and they're sleeping. Socks can go a long way. So that's why we always try to give them good thermal socks. Um, socks, you'll be surprised. Sometimes we give our, our homies earplugs. And earplugs can serve as a way to sound drown out the sound of the city. Mm -hmm. But essentially, it serves as a way of keeping bugs out of your ear canal. Mm -hmm. When you're sleeping on the street. Mm -hmm. And if you think about it, the ear, nose, and throat doctor has that title because it they're all connected. Your ear, nose, and throat go through your ear. It's going to get in your throat. You're going to be in a bad situation and you're going to have to seek medical condition, medical help. And so that's why we keep give them those when they're on the streets because it keeps the bugs, which ha your ear has naturally has wax in it. If a mm -hmm. bug is caught in your ear canal, that, that creates an eternal, an, an eternal problem. Mm -hmm. So, and our bags vary per winter, per summer, um, but for the most part, this is what is essentially uh, in our in our blessing bags. Hmm. Wow. wow. That's amazing. And just to let you know, there's a lot of people, a lot of people that are chiming in and mm -hmm. loving what's going on. Um, there's a lot of sorrows on here. So, <laughs> there's so many. I, hey, I we'll be on here for the rest of the <laughs> Yes, thank you for joining us. Uh, Charlie Twos, thank you for joining us. Um, there, a lot of people are just loving it. Um, there, there's just a lot of communication that is happening um, in regards to it. Bring the knowledge. Knowledge is power. Thank you. Yeah, that's, that's some things in which we didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. um, oh, Miss Addicts, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you, mm -hmm. Ms. Brown. Thank you. Wow. I know y'all got some questions out here. So family, if you have any questions, please definitely chime in. Um, we have Angie Bell. Uh, wow. She's, she's teaching right now. So yeah. <laughs> that definitely ahead. is. Yes. Hey, money. You look like he's, he's, he's pontificating on something right now. Well, I had the um, pleasure of meeting Miss Bell back in 2018. Uh, she was a recipient of the Crown Keeper Award, the UT Awards, and yes. I found her to be very, very compelling. And dur now during this interview, it even shows up even more. Now, you were talking about having to deal with grief earlier, which actually mm -hmm. helped you to start um, this foundation. Mm -hmm. Um, with you coming across so many different people who have so many different stories to actually put them in that particular situation, mm -hmm. how how do you keep yourself from being emotionally drained? Because I know that can be taxing at times. Um, it was a very good question. Thank you so much. There are some people in my life, um, I, gosh, my support system, my network is so strong. And one of the things I found to be very beneficial for me is to be very to be transparent. I uh, initially I felt really shame about grieving and grieving hard and dealing with anxiety and when I and I used to say I deal with anxiety. I don't deal with anxiety. I live with anxiety as a result of something traumatic that has happened. And what I realized is there's some people who have prayed for me times when I didn't even know it. Um, there are people who support me when I say, I'm not going to do Lamps Love Project anymore. This is it. I give up. I can't go anymore. When you're on the streets of Atlanta in Charlotte and you see a three-year-old in a onesie and it's 89, 90 degrees outside and all you have in your hand is all you have in your hand. 
and you have Gatorade and you think about, I'm going to get back on this train. I'm going to ride home and I'm going to go home in my house. Mm-hmm. And everybody mm-hmm. I come in contact with, I want to bring them home with me. Initially, when I, when I go home, I have people like even today, there are people who were sending me messages before I even logged in that said, just breathe. You got mm-hmm. it. And unbeknownst to me, one of my good support friends just walked through my front door and just showed up. And that's what they do. They, they show up, they pray for me. Um, and I have my parents and my siblings who pray for me. And they tell me, there's no time frame when you're grieving. We're not rushing you. You don't have to hurry up and do that. Take your time. And when you start realizing that people who are volunteering on the streets have been homeless. They have dealt with the loss of their parents. They've dealt with the loss of their um, friends. When you start hearing those stories, you realize I'm not alone in this. I'm not alone Mm -hmm. in this. And they, my friends will tell you, I give up. I want to quit every time I do distribution. That We've been doing this for eight years. And, and literally to this point, I can't park my car in my own garage because it's full of Lance Love Project wow. socks and mm-hmm. things that we've ordered just from when we did Tent City. And so that's how I know that this is not a job that I was qualified for but a job that God qualified me for. So he doesn't mm-hmm. call the qualify, he qualifies the called. And I was called to do it, kicking and screaming, mind you. And I would trade the loss of my loved ones any day. However, I feel like I've gained 300, 400 other family members in the loss of, in, in the four or five that I've lost. So it's hard and I, it is, it's hard because there are times when I'm not sure volunteers are going to show up. I'm not sure we're going to get the donations. I don't know how I'm going to afford socks. I don't know how I'm going to get toothbrushes. I don't know how I'm going to get Gatorades, plastic storage bins. And without fail for eight years, it has happened. And it's gone on, going off without a hitch. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let me me read this off to you real quick, sis. Mm -hmm. Um, it says it's, it's so much. I can't put it on there. I want to block you. But she said, please tell her I love her media voice. Seriously. She is a modern day Harriet Tubman. Truly an inspiration to us all. I love you. Angel, not Angie. Mm-hmm. Angel. Um, she said um, another person said every single time God shows up. That's a testimony to the work that you're doing. That's why it's mm-hmm. so important people, that we had to have her on the show tonight. Um, to kind of remind us of you know mm-hmm. how comfortable we've gotten, mm-hmm. but yet the work mm-hmm. is still to be done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, Miss Angie Bell, I you talked about Tent City, yes, and um, I made it a, a mission that I was like, you know, the one of the men was saying, you know, we need rat deterrent because we get so much food mm-hmm. that we but we don't have a place mm-hmm. to put this like we are so gracious so um i talked to a couple people and i was like we gotta get the trash so this gentleman had like an older pickup and we gave bags and he was parked i guess that's where the 277 like mm-hmm. if you would come and yes. we can go okay yes. i don't know the name of that street is but he was there and um, law enforcement came and made him move. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very like, are you serious? And and so we were mm-hmm. hesitant to give the rat deterrent because of the children that was there. Um, but I, you know, I tried and I had that moment of defeat. Like, you know, I can't believe this. Like, how can, how can, you know, you say hands off so you know citizens are coming to help and then you guys are bringing sending law enforcement to move us because we're trying to get the trash um prior to them moving them Mm -hmm. uh, there was a gentleman that worked in a scrap yard so he brought the big 10 cans and they were taken uh, because they were deemed a safety hazard 
Um, these are the, the type of things that in my short trying to do something and be a part of the, the solution instead of the problem I came up against with, with, with the brick wall. So um, just to have the encouragement, the support, um, you know, I'm, I'm just saying this so our family understands that this is not easy and that this is this is not where you're like, oh, I'm just relying on people. Sometimes it's not about relying on volunteers. Sometimes you're fighting against the very people that have set up the type of dynamics. The reason why we have homelessness yes. at the rapid rate that we have it. Yes. Um, so it's, it's been very it's been very difficult. So I can't imagine, but I do applaud the eight years that you've done this. And uh, I don't want to put this at the end of the show. So if you can, since you've given us a list of the things that people can put into the blessing bags, how are you receiving these donations? How do you, you know, have the tangible goods and also maybe monetary donations? So the very good question and, and good point. And I want to come back to that as well. So for donations, Lamb's Law Project, I started when I, I wanted to see, it was supposed to be a temporary thing, something I was going to do for maybe a year, six months, it kind of helped me with grieving. And then it just grew and it continues to grow. And I'm so grateful for it. I am a better woman because of it. 100%. And I'm going to actually say 120% because some of my personal dollars goes into Lamps Love Project. 100, 120% of our donations go back to our homies. I don't, we don't keep a dime. I use my personal vehicle and this is all out of love. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I do. I do it all out of love. My, I. It takes a beating. My body takes a beating. Um, with Lamps Love Project, and one of the reasons, and uh, well, to answer your question, donations. I have. I have come to my desk at work. Gone to my desk at work, and there will be six bottles of deodorant. I can come home from work, and there'll be Ziploc plastic bags on my front door. People ship me things. My high school teacher, um, whom I hadn't seen since high school, sent a box of socks from our Amazon wish list. And Lamp Slow Project has an Amazon wish list. We also have um, Cash App. And with Cash App, we, we like to shop. We love for people to go out and shop. And we really encourage you to take your children. Take them to the store and let them shop for others. If you want to do something, not just around the holidays, but during Christmas, I mean, during um, the school year, take your children out and let them use some of their dollars and mix with some of your dollars and buy something for someone else. Our list is on our Facebook page, Lamps Love Project. We like to use Amazon because one, we can buy in bulk. And anytime we can buy in bulk, that is a blessing because if anyone knows me personally, I, I personally don't, I try not to ever ask for anything, although I should sometimes ask for help. Um, I'm not one to really ask for help very often, very much often, but for Lamps Love Project, oh, I will ask you, hey, can you give me $10? Can you give us $5? Because it's not for me. I will tell you this. I remember we were on the streets one day and we were doing a distribution and we had a man who was helping us and he ran into another man and the man called his name. One of our homies said his name and they made eye contact and looked at each other. And he said, Hey man, what's going on? I went to high school with you. Wow. I know you, they knew each other. And, and he just simply said, you know, I fell on hard times. Mm -hmm. It just shows you how far we're all one paycheck, bad decision incident away from that situation. Mm -hmm. And, Doing Lamps Love Project, you realize a lot, you know, you see people, you, we all, we're quick to judge. We're quick to say, mm -hmm. oh, no, he has an iPhone, whatever number they're on. I, I know you don't deserve that. Mm -hmm. But the thing is this, family members are quick to say, hey, you have a habit and you have some less than favorable characteristics. You can't come live with me. But I do want to care for you. So I'm going to give you a way to communicate with me if you need something. Mm -hmm. but I cannot allow you to be in here with me, with my children and I. And that just says a lot. Don't think of it. Oh, you got an iPhone. Maybe you're just trying to, mm -hmm. you know, trick me. When you see him at the intersection, oh, I bet they drive a Mercedes. So what? 
Do you have the stamina to go out there on the intersection and stand there for eight hours in the sun? Because I probably do it for an hour. That's just doing Lamps Love Project. It's not our job to judge. Think about the reason why you're doing it. I'm doing it because this is going to make me feel better. What they do with it is it's not my business. If you decide to take this bottle of soap back to Dollar Tree and get the dollar, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Because it's equivalent to me having my one can of cherry Pepsi in the morning. And everybody knows, let's not talk about anything until I've had this one can of cherry Pepsi. Then <laughs> we can move on. <laughs> the same as my girlfriend, Denise. We all learn quickly mm -hmm. not talk to her before she's had her coffee. It's the same thing. You have to make sure that the reason why you're doing it is because of what why you're doing it. Back to what you were saying about Tent City. When we went out the other night, the 17th, I think it was, mm -hmm. uh, my girlfriend, Camelia's daughter, Sierra, sent me a message and said, she sent, she sent a text that said, Tent City needs that our homies need storage bins with wheels. And I was working and I looked at it and I said, mm, okay. And then, of course, knowing me, she knew what she was doing, too. She knew she she knew that wasn't going to sit well on this little show right here. Uh -huh. And I'm like, OK, Sierra, I listen, it's a Wednesday. I don't have my I just put my car in the shop. I had my uncle's pickup truck, so I didn't really have time for that. I got a lot on my mind. And then God just started unfolding things. You have mm -hmm. a pickup truck. They need storage bins. You have resources. Tap into them. So I put it out there. Y'all, we just let's try to get 20 bins. You sure did. 20 mm -hmm. bins turned into 41 bins. Mm -hmm. 41 bins with wheels and handles. And handles. So I told my girlfriend, I said, can you and Sierra come over? Let's go put these bins on the street. She said, well, my husband's off. He can bring his pickup truck. So now we have two truckloads. <laughs> so I go and get potato raids and I get... Um, Potato chips, good potato chips, snack chips. Let's hit the streets. And we hit the streets late at night. I'm driving this pickup truck. And she's in her daughter's in the middle. And she's on the end. And her husband's in the back. And we're riding through the darkest streets of Charlotte. The dead ends, no lights. And we're finding mm -hmm. people in tents. Mm -hmm. And we're out there. We are out there. This is what we do. And we wouldn't have it any other way. I know my family worries about me. I know they worry about me. I know they're like, now my nephews and niece get a kick out of it. They're like, okay, hey, Angie, what are you doing? Where are you going? What you, you know, what do you see? <laughs> and you see pictures of me. I'm, we, we sing with our homies. We hug our homies. Initially, when we started, I didn't want children to volunteer because I was afraid for their safety. Mm -hmm. Then we had a volunteer, one of our friends who, one of my friends who volunteered and her, we realized they ran out of blessing bags because we divide up and we split up and we go different ways. My mommy's on here, guys. So um. we, go different way, we go different ways. And one of the things is the kid ran out of blessing bags and the homeless, the, one of our homies said, well, can I have a hug? And without hesitation, that child hugged her. How often do we do that? And I think about it years prior when CIAA was in town and we were buying $100 tickets to these parties. We were all dressed up and we were doing the thing. But we're standing in somebody's living room. We're walking past these people like we don't see them. Mm -hmm. And we're good. We're going to, you know, all these restaurants and we're doing the thing as a black mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. And you telling me that you're going to go in here and eat and bring me your leftovers? How then am I my brother's keeper? Mm -hmm. So that to me said, okay, you know what? I'm not going to, we give distribution twice a year, November, just before the holidays and May during my cousin Yolanda's birthday. Then we started doing June, July, August and September. Those are the hottest months of the year. And we started giving out water and we mixed water and we said, okay, we have some water, some Gatorade. And Gatorades were a hit. So we mm -hmm. said, hey, in the summertime, we're going to give out cold Gatorades and snack bags. And we give a lot of protein. Just, oh, in our snack bags, we give peanut butter. 
we have um, Slim Jim, we give breast mints, we give uh, vitamin C, emergency packets for um, vitamin C. We're so strategic about what we have in these bags because it's much needed. And when we do it this way, we even have a, a young man, a young volunteer. He writes these cards for us every distribution. I don't know if you can see this card. And it simply says, all you need is love. Oh, wow. You know, he's not any mm. material. He writes, he has a book full of inspirational sayings. And he writes these cards for every single blessing bag that we do. Wow. Mm. Wow. So not only are you lighting a pathway for mission, but you are bringing up those younger ones to take it over. Yes. Yes, because you, you, I don't believe in. <clears throat> well, let me ask. Let me just say this: If we all continued the legacy of someone we lost, we would be a powerful community. Yep. If we continue our grandmother's legacy, our aunt's legacy, our uncle's legacy, my cousin's legacy. Don't wait until someone dies to start to, to do a legacy. Mm -hmm. And my, my motto has always been, always will be, don't wait until you need support to be supportive. I don't have to have a connection to MS or breast cancer or any other foundation to say, hey, I'm going to support that. I'm going to, I don't know anybody who's homeless. Don't wait until you need support to become supportive. Mm -hmm. It's okay to help. Ooh, I'm just looking at all the comments that's flowing in. Huh? She's coming in. <laughs> Man, oh my goodness. The impact that she's had mm -hmm. um, just is just simply amazing. I can't I can't even express, I mean, the love that is pouring out right now. Um and and the, and the thing is, um, because I've known her for quite some time, it's not it's not done for form or fashion. Yeah. But it's done because that's the work that, like she said, she was called to do. And people are just, they're astounded. They just, they keep popping up. It's just like, man, oh my goodness, I, I just can't believe it. But with that being said, sis, um, has there ever been a, a time when you were out there? And, you know, I, I know you mentioned mm -hmm. you know, times when you were ready quitting stuff, but was there a time in which it was just that one? individual that really not tugged at your heartstrings but really just grabbed your heart and and just you know really shook you per se there are a lot of times there are a lot of, there are a lot of times there are a lot of people um i can just i can't think of a number of times but one that one of them that comes to mind is here recently um with, with COVID and quarantine, and I'm very much, people will tell you, I'm very much into quarantine. I am, I, I, I work for the hospital system, so I know quarantine is, and, and COVID, I work closely with both of them, but mm -hmm. with COVID. So I wasn't going to let my homies go without service. And so we were going to do distribution. We were due, we were due to do distribution in November. And I'm like, oh, this isn't going to happen because of COVID. Mm. And then I was like, nope, that's not how my God works. So I got my uncle's pickup truck, which we call the Big Green Blessing Machine. So we all, we all got the Big Green Blessing Machine. And I grabbed a few friends, um, Holly from Renew Charlotte, my um, Sora and Realtor, uh, Toya Dillard, her husband, and Wendy with Black Girls Run. And um, I called my, my spiritual friend, Camelia. She prayed for us. We hopped in the big green blessing machine and we rode on the back of the pickup truck in the, in the, in the cold, dirty. And we were dirty. Y'all, we were dirty, dirty. <laughs> and we, give, we, we gave out blessing bags. And we came across this man who was more towards Center City. And we fell in love with him. I mean, we jumped off the back of that pickup truck and gave him so much love. Mm -hmm. And and I think he was saying it's Chill Wheel. And we, oh, we love Chill Wheel. We, we love Chill Wheel. <clears throat> but we also ran across another lady. And 
she said to us, can you go on Instagram and send my son a message and tell him I'm okay? Mm. Oh, my gosh. Oh, Lord. So I said, I tell you what, give me your number. She had a cell phone. Give me your number and I'm going to reach out to your son. And I said, what is it that you want for Christmas? And she said, I would love to have a radio. Mm. She said, I just want to be able to hear when the storm is going to come. I just want to be able to hear, you know, TV. She wanted, and Wendy, our volunteer, we were, we were arguing about who was going to jump on it first. Mm-hmm. She ordered her a radio off of Amazon. And she, we got her phone number. That's one of, the, one of my homies whose phone number I do have. And we checked on her periodically. Where are you at? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And she said, when I get $10, I want you to come back. We're going to go to this little restaurant over here. And I said, well, when you get $10, you call me. I'm, I'm not going to belittle her enough to say, hey, let me give you $10 and take you to so-and-so. Mm-hmm. You have a friend yeah. in me. You have a friend in me. That's hard. We, cro- we come across people who are um, pregnant. But one of the things that is the hardest for me are seeing women on the streets because we have planted volunteers. Well, sometimes people know who they are. Sometimes they don't know who they are. But I'll ask a certain volunteer to give out sanitary pads. You don't want to be homeless and not be able to address that issue. Mm-hmm. And so I go to Sam's Club and I buy brand name sanitary pads. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and we give them to them. Mm-hmm. And we put them to the side. Hey, do you need this? Hey, do you need that? We learned early on we don't give, give mouthwash because it has a high alcohol content. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We don't give anything to shave with any razor. We used to. We thought we didn't know. And so then we, I, after the first time we gave them out, I said, never again. But we're going to get rid of those. Um, I remember a time when I ran a 5K race just before distribution. And this is how much Lamp's Love Project is in my heart and in my mind. I said, what y'all going to do with all these bananas that's left over from this race? Because I know y'all going to throw them in the trash. And I loaded the bananas up and I took them on the streets to a whole nother population that couldn't afford to run that race out in Lake Norman. Mm -hmm. Let me take these bananas to my homies. Mm. Because that's that's potassium. That potassium Mm. is what we need to keep going. And that's how much I love what I do. When, I, when we do distribution on the streets, I don't personally give out blessing bags. I hang behind and I watch the reactions of our homies. And you'll see them, hey, you want to trade this? Can I have your so-and-so? Or you'll see them just open the bags and they're like, hey, look, we had one lady who literally chased us down the road screaming, hey, 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 come here, come here. And we're like, uh-oh, what happened? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I fell the other day and I've been in pain for three days. And I'm so glad you gave me this Motrin. Hmm. Let me do it. <laughs> it is something to be spiritually <laughs> driven. I mean, Miss Bell, do you not see that God ordained this from the beginning with you? From being in the medical field to have the knowledge to know what to put in bags, to know what's needed during a certain season, to know what what people are going to be succumbs to because of different seasons of the time and the areas that they're in. Mm-hmm. Who thinks about falls and scrapes and you know how to do that? Like he has ordained all of your steps to be so successful and efficient in your mission. So a lot of people want to be missionaries. They want to do the mission and they're not efficient. What's the point of you going out here doing something when you're not going to be a blessing? So your 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 Love's Land project is so so big, and you probably don't even understand the great the the magnitude of what it is. I've known who you are without meeting you because I've given to your organization throughout these years for the blessing bags yes. for the totes. My girlfriend tagged me in it. And she was like, I'm going to the store now. I said, let me cash out you. Yeah. So there's there's a lot that that happens that you are just being ordained to do. So you can't give up. Even when you say 
I'm tired of this today. No, you can't do it because God has ordained this and he's just woven it so perfectly. It is such a beautiful picture. It is such a beautiful piece of work that you cannot give up. And so being able to have the list, I do want to touch on really, really quick because you are going in in places that other people won't go, especially being a woman at night. And you have the stigma around homeless and, oh, they're crazy and all of them have mental illness. You have people in our our county, you know, and our, our county officials and our city officials putting this out to citizens saying that, well, you know, people that are homeless, they usually have mental issues. Really? Anyway, um, do you care about your safety? Are you concerned? And, and what do you do to give yourself confidence in, in that? that safety. I mean, we have a lot of people, especially now that I discuss with, because I'm, I'm a strong proponent of firearms. Mm -hmm. I believe in protecting yourself. I believe in being knowledgeable and safe and protecting mm -hmm. yourself. Also, I'm a large proponent of, you know, knives. Mm -hmm. um, not because you want to carve mm -hmm. somebody up, but again, you need to be able to know how to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know if you're a queen like that with me, with firearms, but, you know, how do you feel, you know, confident to to be out here in the streets? Because that's more than just the grace of God on you. You 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 walk with a confidence when you're doing it. So, and I appreciate you asking me that. From one queen to another, I salute you. I um, can honestly tell you, initially, well, one, I am. Not only do I pray, but I am prayed for. And my mom, I said, mom, pray for me. She, ever since I was in high school, I said, mom, mom, pray for me. And she'll say, I pray for you, but you got to pray for yourself. And <laughs> I learned, you do, you pray for yourself and you be your biggest, you be your own champion. You be your biggest, you be your biggest competition. I am my biggest competition. I don't compete with anyone else because I can, I'm too busy to compete with the woman I was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So anybody else, I'm not really sure what you're doing because Angie that I was yesterday, she gave me a run for my money, so I got to get on it today. So with that being said, um, when we do distribution for Lamp Slug Project, we always are asking for men. If you know any organization that does anything with the with volunteerism, it's mm -hmm. mostly women led. But what I want them to see is that there are men behind these women. So when we do walk the streets, I make sure our men are not carrying anything in their hands. Their hands are free. So that they're always aware. But mm -hmm. I'm always situation awareness for all of our volunteers. Make sure you're aware. You mentioned mental illness. Yeah, some of our homies do have mental illness. So do some of my homies. All right. Good point. We houses have mental illness. Yes. Our loved ones have mental illness. So you're right. We do. Some some people do. However, um, I am blessed to have what we who we call Cap Washington, who es who escorts us on the streets of Charlotte. We are blessed enough to be able to travel via light rail. We leave our cars part away from where we serve so that people do not see where we're coming from. You don't know where these blessing bags come from. We don't dress alike. We're, we're just regular street people doing what we're supposed to do. And so we do um, hit the streets a lot. We, we are underneath the under trees. We are checking vital signs. We have a nurse that travels with us. One of our nurses named Kim. Kim checks vital signs. Kim is a... Uh, and she has a master's degree. She's a phenomenal nurse. And she helps us with medical services. Uh, we have a songbird who goes with us who sings to our homeless friends. However, <clears throat> I never travel alone. I am a big supporter of firearms. I am an NRA fire a pistol instructor. I am a certified range safety officer. I am certified in Stop the Bleed, basic first aid. And I am well on my way to becoming certified in concealed carry, uh, or teaching concealed carry. And so I do uh, travel with um, a firearm, <laughs> a variety of firearms. And uh, <laughs> what kind of firearm is there? One of your I said she stays strapped. <laughs> <laughs> this is my baby. <laughs> T'Challa. Mm. And T'Challa um, is from Black Panther. And mm -hmm. I travel with T'Challa quite often. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> my goal is to empower women. 
especially women of color. I, I'm, I, love, I love knives as well. I have quite a few that were gifted to me by my brother, um, whose birthday is tomorrow's happy birthday, Tony. But happy birthday. Happy birthday. my brother is one of the ones who made sure that I was where I needed to be. And I was able to empower other women. Mm -hmm. I do believe if, if you, prior to COVID, there were over 60,000 black women and children missing and no one was looking for us. Mm -hmm. They still aren't looking for us. That's true. Yeah. So I have too many nieces and nephews that I got to get back home to by any means necessary. So with that being said, yes, I do teach one-on-one -on -one fire on safety and situational awareness to women, children, men, whoever wants to learn. But my main passion is women of color. And is this a uh, another business for you? Is this another mission for you as well in con conjunction to... They're connected. I, I have a business that's launching next month and it's called Protect Her. And with Protect Her, I will be teaching <clears throat> all components of firearms. Firearm fundamentals, self-protection in your home, self-protection in your vehicle, self-protection on the streets. I'll be teaching how to clean your firearm, which is one of my favorite things to do, and helping you select the firearm that's perfect for you. And that, to me, just says that you... There's a variety of occupations that women are doing nowadays. If you just think about one occupation, for example, a realtor, most are females, and they go into homes with strangers all the time. Yep. What better victim? Mm -hmm. And we can't have that. Mm -hmm. So stay ready. If you stay ready, you won't have to get ready. And I am um, also want to share with you all that I am in the process <clears throat> of starting a all women's shooting club. Exclusive. You heard it here first on at the round table. Right here. <laughs> That's right. The all women's shooting club. No one else is doing it. Mm. And it needs to be done. Don't spend $500, $600 on a firearm and let it be a paperweight. Protect yourself. And do it with education, with empowerment, and with encouragement. And your firearm is one of my favorite things to do. And helping you select them. <laughs> you know where that came from? <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow. <clears throat> That's right. Ema said it herself. <laughs> said, they said she couldn't do it. She did. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely in a, in a very male dominated field, and that's okay. That's okay. If it's going to save a life of another woman, I'll step up to the plate. Well, I'm stepping up to be one of the women in your class and in your instruction, and hopefully, once, um, I can qualify for membership. I'm I'm being a person that will will step up for that because one thing about having strong women who are paving and cutting down hedges and and making pathways, we have to support women. And this yes. isn't this isn't a color thing. It's this not. is a woman thing. Yes. You need to support other women when they are doing certain things. This is not an exclusion thing. It's an inclusion thing. And so when you start saying and feeling like, okay, you know what? I can do this and be unapologetic about caring about who you are. Yeah, you do it and you find it. Guess what? Ladies, men find women who can handle a gun very, very attractive. So it's going to be a win-win for a you. It is a win-win. It's nothing like, and I truly believe, you know, this is a personal belief that it, that it's going to take, you know, women, especially the black woman, to save the black men. And one of the one thing I love about being a firearm owner is knowing the law and how that works. Mm -hmm. I can strip a gun down in thirty in thirty seconds. What? What? I can, hey. I can strip a firearm. What? In what? What? Right what? There, <laughs> 
See? Ooh. You gotta, oh. you gotta, yeah. So you gotta, you gotta be able to strip your firearms down. The police get behind you. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Wow! I'm taking a spring out. I take my barrel out. We no longer have a gun. Go ahead on, sis. Go ahead yeah. on. No that gun. was under. That was under thirty. That was, that was like under 10. thirty. Yeah. Jason Bourne ain't got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <huh. laughs> That's but my it goes back to protection. You get behind me. Yes, I'm legally right, have every legal right to own one. However, that's not going to keep you from causing harm to me and mine. Therefore, yes. No, he doesn't have a firearm. She doesn't have a firearm. Although she legally can, she doesn't. Wow. That was a little tidbit for you guys for free. That was a little. <laughs> that was just a little tidbit for free. Yes. Just a little popcorn kernel. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, that thing was quick too, boy. Yes. What you talking about, man? What yes. you talking yes. about? Yes. I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. So, Miss Bell, how we're we're at the final stages. Guys, y'all got any more questions? I mean, this woman has been phenomenal. Anytime mm -hmm. I thought I had a question, she is, she has answered it in in her mm -hmm. speaking and her yes. ministering about this mission. So, my brothers, y'all got something for this queen? Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Y'all need hey. a napkin. <laughs> hey. Hey. They need to wipe the sweat from their brow. Uh, <laughs> that may uh, have to be quick. You want to have to yeah. come together. She's not like the others. She's not I'm, like the others. Well, I'm, I'm in the bedroom still trying to <laughs> break it down. Hey, try to get the lock off. Y'all yeah. <laughs> like, oh, slow. Yeah. Wow. Uh, well, I go. Oh, I go. I, go ahead. I'll let her share her information. And we'll just close well, yeah, out with just the final question as far as when is the next distribution. Um, if you want to share that real quick. Yes. Yeah, so our next distribution will be in May. May the 16th, um, if, if let me go back to my calendar, because yeah, May 16th is always on a Sunday and it's always at 3 p.m. And it's usually the third Sunday of the of the month in May and mm -hmm. in November and in all of our summer months. We're always looking for street teamers. Um, we are always looking for donors. If you can't donate and you can't volunteer, if you will just simply say a prayer for us and our safety and our continuation of this mission, that is enough and it is well with my soul. Yep, yep. And please share the Cash App and Amazon because there's people that mm -hmm. are asking as well, yes. so they can definitely be a blessing with yes. those blessing bags. Yeah, our Amazon is Lamps Love Project. Our Cash App is Lamps Love Project. Um, L-A-M-P-S L-O-V-E P-R-O-J-E-C-T Lamps Love Project. Um, you, we, you can follow us on Facebook or Instagram, Lamps Love Project. Again, we are not a 501c3 and, and I teeter about that because mm -hmm. the word says you're supposed to be our brother's keeper and you don't give to get get returned. Although mm -hmm. it, would be, it would be a great benefit for Lamps Love Project, for eight years you all have shown us that it's not necessary. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing what you're doing. We have provided for well over, I would say we, we've given out well over two, three thousand blessing bags. So we are doing great. We couldn't do it without you all. And I thank everyone who's ever donated, who has ever given a, a prayer, who's ever said anything kind. We definitely appreciate it. Who has ever said, Angie, I know grief isn't easy. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank at the round table for just this opportunity um, to be seen. I, I've never, people have seen, heard about Lamps Love Project you don't. You never really see the face or the people behind it. You see my street teamers, but it's a pleasure to share with you all what God has shared with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, I tell you what, sis, you are, and I'm. I'll say this in all sincerity: you are a true inspiration. Keep doing what you're doing, and more and more blessings to you. And everybody who may watch this later know that it is easy to fall into homelessness and yes. even harder to get out of it. Yes. Right. Yes. And as you see, our friends in Tent City, yeah. they run out of money of housing them. So they're back on the streets. Yep. 
the money ran out. <laughs> money ran out. And what the mm. guy say, I love this interview. He said, people want to ask me if I'm going. He said, for three months, if you ain't got nothing for me after three months, he said, what's the sense of me going? Yeah. Mm. And if you think about it, when we did research for the Amsterdam Project, a lot of them want to go to the shelters and the hotels anyway, because if you're going to put, it's like putting them in a cage. You're going to yep. put them in and tell me what to do. Mm-hmm. Yep. And you're going to, it's, the 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 borrower is a slave to the lender. Hmm. That's hmm. it. And a lot of it's come up now about Tent City in the the big production when all it was is to get rid of them, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what it was. I'm using my words intentionally to get mm-hmm. rid of them because now the developers are ready to build on that land, but yes. they act like they were going to. And we did the same. Thing. We did the same thing for the DNC. We put them in a hotel as well. Mm-hmm. We got them off the streets and made it, made the city look pretty. Made it look pretty. Mm-hmm. We did. Yeah. And then it was after that mm-hmm. we got to check out. Well, mm-hmm. I'm grateful um, to you mm-hmm. and your project and your mission. I'm grateful for accepting the invitation to come at the mm-hmm. be a guest on at the round table. Um, mm-hmm. I have. Mm-hmm taken one thing away from you because it struck my heart and that I just paraphrased what you said about legacy and I just said as an elder I'm to leave a legacy as the youth you are to continue it that's correct amen amen Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well once again family it's that time in which we hate especially when we get so involved and and you know family y'all have really chimed in and showed the sister love um, please continue to do so. Like she said, pray for her. Pray for her. We say it. Ministry. Um, pray for those that are out there again, too, because, um, yeah, we don't know what's going on with them. We only see it from afar. But if we can say a prayer for them and if you can donate, um, yes. if you can share your time and your energy, um, definitely do so. Um, and stay tuned because she's not done yet. No. You ain't done with her yet. No. <laughs> no. I don't you realize that. No. But yeah, if you get a chance, share this show. Uh, it will be on YouTube. It will be on Facebook. Share it tonight. Let other people know about this ministry. Let other people know that they too can give. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll do it once again. Angie, thank you, sis. Wow, thank, my you. thank you, Kings. Thank you, Queen. I thank oh, you so much. Full, full. So y'all, stay tuned. We And at the end of the show, we'll definitely make sure there's information on how you can contact her and follow her on Facebook. And again, be a part of the cause. Love yes. y'all. Mean it. Thank Talk you. Talk to you later.